What's happening all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 2 from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on January 16th or 17th, depending on where you get your books. What we're looking at here is one of the direct market covers because this book has two direct market covers and one standard edition cover. So this is the one supplied by Mark Bagley. I just happen to choose it because I love Carnage. He's one of my favorite characters. And because we got the Venom direct market cover from the first volume. So this is what they look like together. And we're going to be looking at the other covers with the spines here in a little bit. But I wanted to showcase this first and how they're going to be looking on your shelf. Marvel Omnibus, the Ultimate Spider-Man logo there. Bendis Bagley, the Spider-Man character. And Volume 1, Volume 2. Love it. Consistency. Yes. Now we have a Volume 3 coming out. We'll need a Volume 4 and then a reprint of the... Blank of blank, as I like to call it, because I don't like speaking spoilers uh, for people that haven't read this. Uh, but let's go back to this. So as I mentioned, this is one of the direct market covers by Mark Bagley. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover. That one is also by Mark Bagley, but as you notice, the spines are different. And on the right-hand side is the other direct market cover, that one supplied by John Cassidy. Uh, but... Everything on the inside is identical, so just the spines and the covers are different for these books. That's it. So bringing the focus back to this, yes, that is the fight between Spider-Man and Carnage down there. And we looked at the spine a little bit earlier, but let's look at the back. So the back consists of all the covers that are collected in here, but they're all textless. There's no numbers, no titles on them, they're just the textless covers of the issues collected in here, including the Ultimate Six. Uh, the retail price is $125. Down here you see what is collected in here and some little blurbs about, oh, almost dropped that, about the Omnibus. Underneath the dust jacket, hey, that looks familiar. That is the cover to issue 50, but also the cover to the standard edition. And as you can tell, that there's different than the dust jacket image. And then the back of the book. That is one big Gwen Stacy face. Uh, you can tell where the Ultimate Six series is. We'll talk about what's collected in here. Now, before we dive into this, um, I do want to stress the fact that this is not in continuity with the 616 universe, or as we like to call the main Marvel universe. This isn't the Spider-Man that you've been around, uh, reading about since 1962. This is the Spider-Man that came about in 2000 in the Ultimate line. So, it's not this character from Amazing Fantasy 15, nor Amazing Spider-Man 1. This is the Ultimate reimagining of the Marvel Universe. And I believe this universe is the 1610, 1610 universe, whereas the main continuity universe is the 616 universe. I didn't come up with the numbers. Rumor always has it that Alan Moore came up with the number. But... Going back to this, again, not in the main continuity. So the Peter Parker, the Spider-Man, the, the character supporting cast, the villains you're going to see in here are all reimagined for this, in case you're not familiar with what the ultimate line is. All right, let's crack this open, talk about some of the stories in here, show off this artwork, and look at the build of the book. All right, let's crack this book open. We have some black end paper there. Ultimate Spider-Man. The image by Mark Bagley, another image by Mark Bagley there. Uh, this book printed at the Donley printer. So here are your key players, Peter Parker, Aunt May, Mary Jane Watson, Gwen Stacy, Flash, Thompson, Ultimate Spider-Man. Give me a quick recap as to what's happened in the first 39 issues. So this collects issues 40 to 71 and Ultimate 6. The seven issue miniseries. The book has 984 pages and retails for $125. So in the previous volume, we had him uh, get his origin story. We had him fight his first super villains, including Venom, which ended up ripping up his costume. And that's where we are here. Him and Mary Jane have decided to split ways. They're no longer dating. 
And as a matter of fact, they're finding a hard time just being friends. So that's what this really focuses on, is his relationship with the ladies, the supporting cast. Not just Mary Jane, uh, but also Aunt May. She has a hard time with Peter Parker disappearing, leaving all the time. So she's seeing a psychiatrist. Um, Gwen Stacy uh, having issues with her parents, especially after well, something happened in the previous volume and blaming Spider-Man for it. And uh, the ex-ladies are about to show up. So we meet this character of Geldof, who is an original character to the Ultimate Universe. Because in the Ultimate line, we're used to ultimate versions of villains and superheroes, whether it's the Shocker, Green Goblin, or Kraven, Sandman, Liz, or Flash Thompson. You get the idea. This was an original character, and... Uh, one that was not that popular. He is a character that can blow up things, and what he decides to do is blow up cars to impress the kids at the high school. So Mary Jane is going through some changes. This might be like her haircut <laughs> like they did back in uh, John Romita's day when he wanted to change things up. Uh, this is kind of like the ultimate version of it, but she writes this really sweet letter to Peter, you know, telling him how she really feels about everything. So... Things seem to be going finally the right way in a very light-hearted format for Peter Parker. We see him having to deal with this costume right here, kind of a put-together costume while he's fighting crime because his costume got completely destroyed during the Venom saga, and that's all I will say about that. Uh, this is really interesting because you see this borrowed for the Spider-Man movie, the Homecoming movie. Uh, where you see a bunch of characters robbing a bank, but there were an ATM over there, and Peter Parker stops it. And these characters are all dressed up like Avengers, with the exception of that guy. That obviously is from the Distinguished Competition. But he tries to stop him and do the right thing. And Geldof is a character that might be a mutant, so the ex-ladies show up. And I love this. This is actually pretty funny in the way I think most kids 15 16 15 years old would react to seeing some of these ladies but he's so nervous around them he's like hi i'm peter parker and she's like please don't, don't be sorry it's not a big deal in fact uh you're the first guy in six months who hasn't immediately pictured me naked so i appreciate that that's him talking to Jean gray who can read people's thoughts and then she's like until now and he keeps apologizing she's like are you done and she keeps looking at him and he's like okay i'm done now i promise that part did crack me up i remember reading that for the first time years ago and you still like see this innocence in him because he is 15 years old and you tell that kitty pride is totally crushing on this guy it's her first superhero that she's met that isn't a mutant uh so eventually i'm not gonna tell you how that story ends he does get his costume back uh I love the relationship between him and Aunt May in this. Like I said, she's having a hard time dealing with him, disappearing all the time. She doesn't know exactly what's going on. She thinks he's lying to her. She feels so disconnected from her nephew. So she's seeing a psychiatrist. So I thought that was a really good issue right there. It's one issue that I think has a really good ending. And then we get this issue with the fight with Sandman and Ultimate Doc Ogg that leads directly into this miniseries called Ultimate Six. Now, while Spider-Man, by the way, this is drawn by Trevor Hairstein, but the first few pages are done by Joe Quesada that introduces us to Ultimate Electro. But then we get the Trevor Hairstein artwork here, and it's the ultimate version of the Sinister Six, right? So you're used to those characters from the original universe, and even if you're not, this is still a pretty cool setup where they gather forces to go and fight superheroes so the ultimates play a big role in this yes spider-man plays a pivotal role in this but it feels more like an ultimates comic so it's like the ultimate six versus the ultimates which is the ultimate version of avengers how many times can i freaking say ultimate a hell of a lot more but that's just what they were called they were called the ultimates uh so this time around the ultimate six consists of craven the hunter Electro, Doc Ock, and Sandman, and Green Goblin. So it's a little bit different, and they have a... Did I, that's six, right? Am I counting right? Green Goblin, Craven, Electro, Doc Ock, and... Well, who, who am I missing here? Sandman? I see Sandman? I'm losing count. 
getting older. Uh, and they have a secret member who I don't want to reveal yet, but it's an interesting take on the Sinister Six. Then we have the return of Kingpin. He's back in the city because uh, he's got really good lawyers. We have the ultimate version of, of the Enforcers, like Ox there. And then in issue 50, we're introduced to this young lady here. This is Black Cat, uh, who is stealing something very important from the Kingpin and crosses paths with Spider-Man. For most of this volume, it feels like this throwback to those high school days, to that young, innocent love that you had, the first crush, uh, whenever you would send the girl notes, or she would send you notes in class, or or a boy you liked. And it's just reminiscent of that era for me. I, I really think there's a lot of innocence here, and I find it... Bendis really knew how to write these teenage characters for the time. I don't really agree with the way that he wrote like most of the teachers because they're all kind of jerks to Peter. Even Doc Connors. Well, you also... Well, never mind. Um, but for the most part, like the way that the kids interact with each other, all this drama, all you have to do is just talk and that would solve things. But even back then, you would have issues. I think he really dealt with that so well. Uh, this is the fight with Elektra, again, wrapping up the Kingpin storyline. Now, this is a really interesting story. I think this one's called Hollywood. And this is really tying into the fact that Spider-Man was going to get a second movie, the second Sam Raimi movie, which featured Doc Ock. So this is a very Doc Ock-heavy omnibus, because Doc Ock plays a big part in that Ultimate Six storyline and the issue that sets it up, and then he plays a big part in this Hollywood storyline. So... It's pretty much kind of meta. It, like, they're making a Spider-Man movie, so instead of taking Spider-Man to Hollywood, they're filming on location in Spider-Man's hometown, including his school. So a lot of the kids are excited that they get to be extras in here. So Doc Ock plays a big part in this. Again, another lighthearted story until it changes in tone. So in the first volume, they did the same thing, where it's, you know, pretty lighthearted. You get to see the innocence of Peter Parker with Mary Jane. You get to see him transition into a hero and what makes him a hero. And then it gets dark. And it gets dark here with this storyline of Carnage. Now, I'm not going to go into detail as to why exactly. Um, but there was something here that happened that, for lack of a better word, pissed off a lot of fans that were reading this book. I remember at the comic book store where people were like, I'm done with Ultimate Spider-Man. How dare they do this? Uh, and I'm not going to go into detail as to what that is. The take on Carnage is different than the 616 Universe Carnage. It's not... Uh, how do I talk about this without spoiling it? It's not the same origin. As a matter of fact, it's not the same type of character. It's just a creature. I will leave it at that. And man... There are some dark moments in here, especially one that you don't see coming. Uh, so it's this really great fight. He had just finished fighting Venom in the first arc, and we get this really dark story. And it really causes a ripple like effect in Spider-Man's life. He's dealing with this for issues after the story arc. So that baggage is left over in the school parts of the story where Peter is getting in trouble at school because he feels so lost, like he felt like he let down so many people uh and then the lightheartedness begins again where peter and wolverine switch bodies in this little story arc as a matter of fact this feels like an editorial assistant editor month at marvel that type of story because it begins with brian michael bendis introducing the story going hey we're doing something silly in these next couple of issues he's in both parts of that then we get the doctor strange story and johnny storm decides to go and finish high school and he happens to go to the same high school that Peter Parker goes to. He has his eyes on Liz, but it's Johnny Storm. So he has his eyes on everybody and there's a good team up between them. This was another lighthearted story. Again, balancing that darkness with the lighter stories to, you know, keep you reading because otherwise you're going to, this book could be a complete downer. And this is the Dr. Strange story. I'm sorry. It, this shows up at the very end. That kind of sets up what will happen in the next volume. All the way in the back, we have some deleted scene scripts back here. Just a couple pages, the trade paperback cover. 
apparently Volume 7 was irresponsible, and that it's the... I think, yeah, that's the very first set of uh, issues that are collected in here. Character designs of Geldof right there, of Kingpin. I do love the fact that Kingpin was such a big crime boss at the beginning of this, because it wasn't until, in the 616 universe, Daredevil, that he was that big crime boss. Not till Frank Miller's Daredevil. Because in Spider-Man, he was just one of these bad guys that could have been like the Enforcers here. Like Fancy Dan and Montana and Ox, who make ultimate appearances. I uh, really like Black Cat's design at one point. I, don't worry, I thought I saw it in here. There we go. Like, that's a little too much Catwoman. You know, do you, you, you want to still have that Black Cat look without looking like a character of Selena Kyle. And other character designs by Mark Bagley. There's some sketches by Mark Bagley for the covers. And there's a lot of Spider-Man covers. The John Cassidy covers for Ultimate Six. And cover pencils again by Mark Bagley. And then the end paper. Now, let's look at this binding. 984 pages. It is sewn binding. And there's that big eye right there. Making those spread pages look just wonderful. There. Now, I will note that the paper stock they're using for this one is a little bit thinner than Volume 1. That's just because I just had Volume 1 out a little bit ago. So you are going to see a little bit of bleed through from white pages. Let's see if I can find a good example. Well, I mean, these are good examples here. You can see on the white the art bleeding through from the other side not by a lot but some i did want to point that out but the way the book just lays over towards the front and towards the back very nice so this is one that i know a lot of my viewers have been anticipating asking me where my overview is well it's finally here what i'll do is compare it because these were previously released in these oversized hardcovers and of course trade paperbacks and the single issues and ultimate collections but those were discontinued um i wanted to compare the way that they do the covers here and to show off the difference in the paper stock this is thicker glossy paper than what they're using here uh but yes there's no volume number on these where the volume number is there you don't see the full title because it's all textless uh, but you at least get the volume number so you know what issue you are in uh, but I wanted to compare quickly the pages here towards the end, which do have some white. Just a little bit here where you can kind of see the word bubble from the other side and maybe a little bit there. Uh, but mainly this panel here with the version of this oversized hardcover right there. So you can tell that there is a frame, of course, because I mean, bleed through whenever there's a lot of white, it's going to happen. But here you can see there's a word bubble and then a little bit of words. You can't really read it here. You can vaguely tell. Um, but that's that's mainly the big difference. And I did want to point that out for the people that had these and were thinking about upgrading. Uh, but doesn't bother some people, but it does bother others. Just want to make sure I cover all the bases when doing these overviews. So that's it. That's all I wanted to say about Ultimate Spider-Man. That, as they say, is that until Ultimate Spider-Man 3, right? If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up. If you've never read any of this content, this is your first time going in. Uh, if you've read the stories in here, what you thought about them, and which you prefer. You know, do you like the 616 universe Spider-Man, our, our Spider-Man from, you know, since the 60s? Or do you prefer this Spider-Man from the 1610-1610 universe, the Ultimate Universe? Um, but yes, any questions, comments down below. Check out our Patreon and Spreadshop amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so and more importantly all of you stay healthy and safe out there much love